Thanks. Thank you, Edel. No, I've been very lucky in OPW with all the different awards and, and work. And it's been a pleasure always to work with the colleagues there. I'm going to cover mainly the landscape element of Back Western. And um, I'm just now getting that up for you. And it's really going to deal with how over a period of 18 years, uh, the continuity that OPW has brought to it has really made this uh, place work. So if you, you next slide, uh, Nicola. Yeah, so the, the reason I say not for what it is, but what else it is, is really got to do with sustainability is a very glib term that's become very well used, but often abused as well, because it's not clear what the issues are. So I, I take the view of these things, it has to be based on rational stuff, and it also has to be based on real research. So if we go to the next slide, um, OPW has had a huge information and knowledge on this, and Architectural Services back in 1996 uh, did the Green Design Book for Ireland in association with the European Commission of DG uh, 17. And that was the first time a Green Design Book was done in Europe. Um, and subsequent to that, we've been adding and, and to that knowledge. And as we go forward, we will have more knowledge to add. And early in the new year, we'll be doing a green design for, design for construction, which will cover everything from site selection to specification. And that will be a very significant document. Next slide. And then I think like in anything, there's threats and opportunities. And I always think that to clarify those, so you have sort of green orthodoxy, dialogue, doomsday versus economic uh, progress or woolly jumpers versus green technology or woolly thinking worse and then think of bling and think of just image rather than essence and so I always think there's an imaginative and a critical capacity is crucial for analyzing past the the, the glib talk next slide is the uh, back western campus and you can see it there in red uh, it's just on the border between Kildare and Dublin and you can see across the where the flood area says there's Castletown House across the River Liffey on the other side. And this site that we're working on was a 28 hectare site that has been developed over these 20 odd years. But there was a big issue with flooding. And so the flooding issue and the locals were very uh, taken by what would happen there. And we had to say, well, we will control the flooding issue. And, and actually we have done that. But that was a key issue in the sustainability. And the next slide will show you, we did analysis of views, all the stuff you normally do, wind, speed, all of that stuff that we fed into the scheme and particularly how to solve the flooding element to the project. And then the next slide will show you how uh, you evaluate and synthesize the elements uh, of what the thing is. You define the problem and then you go into a design solution. So it's not as if you suck on your pencil and say, well, here is the solution and because we've already thought it through. You analyze it, you put it through various things. And then of course you have to make a decision, how do you implement it? And the aspects of design that are shown there from proportion to scale to rhythm and unity are all key issues. And the trick is how to balance all of them together to get something, a design solution that resolved the problem. And the next slide will show you uh, what we did. And I, I, I'm be a landscape architect as well as an architect. So the aspects of uh, landscape has a language uh, like verbal language and there are, if you broke it down very simply formal informal and agrarian and then if we next slide we show the different things uh, the different elements of that so if you go to the next slide yeah so in formal landscape it's formal it appears to be reasoned and it appears to be planned order and on the left hand side you have the methodologies of how that's been done over the centuries and if you go to the next one you have informal which is sort of like the British landscape type approach that appears to be picturesque, but in fact, it's planned disorder. So both are planned. So the question is, which is appropriate? And thirdly, if you were to look at uh, the other landscape type, it's the agrarian landscape type. And that is cultivated, it's functional, and it's ordered to do a job. And it's altered by the genus loci, and all that is, is means it's altered by where it is. So where we had this farm, this was a flat field, uh, with a wheat, uh, monocultural wheat, and what were we going to do about it? So if we go on to the next one, this this is the design of the building, the layout of the site as, as of now, before this, the forensic lab goes in. And the next slide will show you 
um, the strategy uh, of how the, the axes and the different ways of moving through the site are concerned, and the blue areas are areas where the ponds are used. And on this next slide, those elements that I mentioned, both from, his, from formal, informal, and agrarian, are applied as appropriate to the site. And so you get things like green rooms where we contain the parking and uh, civilize the parking by uh, how to do that. So there's a whole methodology to that. And if you go down to the next slide, you'll actually see how that's been transformed. And it's not a great Google picture, I'm afraid, but it shows you the different buildings laid out. And on the right hand side is where the forensic laboratory will go in and the future data center. So all to the left has been built and the attenuation ponds, etc., and the contoured floodplain down near the crossroads on the left is how we sorted out the flooding. Uh, and that's done as if it was a landscape element, but it actually works as a controlled floodplain. Uh, and the attenuation ponds, of which there's four in the site, manage the water through the whole thing. So it was a coordination of all those elements. And then the next slide, well, what do you do with all the excavation? We had thousands and thousands of tons of soil to move. And what do you do with that? Do you put it into landfill? Do you keep it? Or what do you do? So now topsoil is very uh, important resource. It takes a thousand years to create topsoil. So you don't want to waste it. And nor do you want to mess other things up. You need to get the water management on the site. And we also needed to give a featureless site some level of of enclosure and other use related to the different functions. So the next slide shows uh, what we had to address. So if you look at the next slide, uh, how do you avoid landfill? And the landfill, you can see there, the quantum of soil, if you go back one slide, yeah. So you can see there the, the quantum of, of soil, it's, um, it's over 107,000 uh, cubic meters of soil. And uh, a, a cubic meter is about one and a half uh, ton. And the amount of truckloads that would have been would have been almost 12,000 truckloads. And the carbon emission of that alone, of dragging the material to the landfill, which is 35 kilometers away, would have created that huge quantity of uh, CO2. So by us not moving it, we saved a huge quantum of CO2. And the next slide, shows you the cost of moving that and the cost of moving it on the site was around for that huge site now it's it's 30 hectares which is almost 70 acres uh was around 600,000 but the average cost of moving it off site would have been over 4 million so if you think of it the saving that was made was three and a half million but that was then put to other use it wasn't just dumped in a corner and the area that you're looking at there in that picture is the area of flood control that goes onto the Dublin Road. And the contours there all relate to controlling how the um, uh, you control the water, but still use it as an area that people can use and walk and use. And then the planting is adapted to that landscape as well. So if we go on to the next one, uh, we look at, for instance, simple things like that soil is adjacent to the Forensic Science Building because it is what it is you may have criminals want to get near it. And some of the people wanted to put a cordon sanitaire, which is two levels of walls with a corridor down the middle with the dogs are let loose in. So if you get into the cordon sanitaire, they let the dogs at you. And that's a security sort of feature. And we said, well, we can't be doing that and inflicting that on all the other people occupying that site. So we shaped the soil almost like with dragon teeth, like you would do for anti-tank emplacements, but it stops the issue of people coming through with Jeeps now, they have to smash through the outer perimeter and everything else. But so we designed the landscape to do various things in various places, and the planting followed that. And on the next slide, you'll see one of the biggest problems is we had a stream coming from Adamstown that ran through the site, caused a flooding at the, at the crossroads, and then that ran down into um, uh, to River Liffey. And we have to make sure that pollution wouldn't get down there. And so we, I think that had to be practical and work. We decided that, it would, I always say in the office, it's easy to come up with one idea. It's come up with one idea that does three or four things is the key thing. So we made use of the water that we had to manage anyhow to create an environment that was positive, not alone just for the occupants of the site, but also for bird life, for cleaning the water and all of those. So that was a key thread working through the building. The next slide. 
you go yeah so the next slide then was these are the different levels of uh, of uh, areas and a thing called an ecotome which is a transition between habitat of aquatic and field we planted different species that would work there and that helps improve uh, biodiversity but also helps clean the water so the water going into the liver liffey now is cleaner than it was before we went onto that site and a lot of the objection originally was that we would pollute the site because we were laboratories we would undermine the whole thing and at least the water treatment plant which is one kilometer further downstream on the river liffey would be affected but we've been able to show that no nothing has happened uh, and even the ducks and the swans have taken the site over the next slide and this is the, a picture of the new attenuation tank that's going in for the forensic lab uh, that was taken about 10 days ago. The next slide, uh, would then I'm just talking about the planting and the elements that how you do that and how do you do that economically. So if you, next slide, I'll show you how we achieve that. Uh, we did, uh, that's the square meterage there, 57,000 of, of woodland trees, and that's a lot to the perimeter, but also elsewhere, and then to specimen trees. But how do we manage that and how do we cost it? So the diagram or the, you see on the right, which is a, a grid, is the setting out of the trees. And they're called whips, small trees that you could buy for a euro. You're bare rooted and you plant them during the winter time. And the different symbols there represent different species. And the species are matched to give a period of time in which the species will evolve. So. Things like silver birch will grow very quickly, oak trees smaller, but oak trees will eventually win out because they live longer. And all of that was brought into, but by using 90% whips, the cost of putting in the trees was minimal. And that planting at one meter centers made there was no maintenance for weeding because the trees were close enough to block out the weeds and the like. And also it gives you a very dense woodland and which naturally thins out as different trees die and the more long living trees survive. So that's a very key thing. And it's a thing I learned in Holland uh, from the way the Dutch planted trees on some of their reclaimed area. And I adapted that idea to Ireland. And it was this, um, the first time that process was used in Ireland. So the next slide. Each tree uh, has different components of how it absorbs CO2. So slow growing trees like oak and hornbeam and beech have a, you know, take up about 123 tons uh, in their lifetime, but they take a long time to grow. So for instance, oak is 350 years. Um, the next one down, silver birch is only 50 to 80 years life. Maples are 250, willows 200. So you can see just different ages and you get different responses. So having very fast growing can give you carbon uh, absorption quicker even though the oak is probably the best tree to use in the long term from the point of view of all the things that are done. But you can see below that there's over uh, almost 7 million tonnes of CO2 will be captured by the planting on that site. Uh, and that also helps dry the site and it also provides a recreational element. If I go to the next one. Next slide, you'll see that in part of the woodlands where it was very damp, we used a natural plant for that, which is silver birch and alder. And in between that, we planted native uh, bluebells, which have now spread throughout the site uh, as part of a naturalizing process. And that process is, is a key thing to understand with landscape. Landscape isn't linear, it's, it's cyclical and linear uh, together. So that woodland habitat was very important. And in oak trees, for instance, will support 20 species of bird and about 200 species of insect, which of course attracts bats and the like. And that's very important. Um, so those elements that you get the benefit of those by thinking of all the potentialities. Next slide, please. Kieran, just to let you know, you have about four minutes there on the clock, if that's yeah, okay. I, I, Thank I, you. I, um, so again, so as you walk through those different areas, there's areas where there's fire tender access needed, but we also made use of those for suitable that you could run and walk on and seating areas in spring and wintertime in those slides. The next one. And that's a good contrast to the type of uh, background you're coming out of a high tech white coat laboratory workspace. And then the, how do you manage cars? There's almost 2,000 cars on this site, and they're all enclosed in, in what I call green rooms and planting and hedging and mounding, and that suppresses the impact of the cars on, on, on the site. The next slide. 
Yeah, and then how do humans use it? So the central area where people have their lunch uh, links out to outdoor spaces, which then link out to the water and to walkways around the site. Next slide. Uh, and then within the laboratories, there's exercise areas where people can go out into uh, nice protected courtyards, again, for their tea station adjacent to their site uh, lab, and then they have views to the landscape as well. Next one. And then those buildings, the central building is they're used as a cluster to create a, a, a nice enclosed spaces. And the little, the next slide will show you the, um, the fire tender uh, lake that we created because it was much better and more economic than putting an underground fire tank, firefighting tank. So we made use of what was required from a fire point of view to give a setting for the landscape. And you can see then the planting uh, at the entrance to the state lab. Next slide. And the uh, agricultural labs then open out into different areas and are done in different ways. And again, there's a whole story of the, the choice of plants, all got to do with biodiversity and longevity. The next slide. Uh, and then this is the food safety office that went in after that, which was about five years after the other three projects were done. Um, and they carry through that same thematic ideas of how you relate to landscape. And if I take the next slide, almost there, uh, is the Forensic Science Laboratory, um, which is an exceptional type of laboratory. Each country only has one. They operate to very, very high standards. And that, again, is part of that element. And we managed to tame the security elements that would, people would be naturally concerned about, but didn't make those security elements that you felt you were inside a, a prison. And the last few slides, uh, this is the main entrance where you come in. You look forward and you see this hill that we created with a lot of the soil in front of you is the pond for the firefighting to the left and to the right are the main buildings and then you can move through the site and uh, next one yeah and then that's firefighting site that leads to the mound and all the elements that you have different ways you can sit and relax and finally the last two three three slides you can see outside the dining area you have one of the attenuation ponds and you can see your neighbor the duck sitting on the steps there uh, waiting to be fed and the next one in the woodland area there's little areas like clearings where people can uh, exercise or just take it easy and a complete change from the type of site they're on and the next one we're almost there is this is the area adjacent to the road where the contouring controls the flood so if the flood happens a thousand year flood happens all the contours contain the water so this is like the overflow place for the water and then that gradually is released back into the system to flow down to the river Liffey as and when that's available and when we had very difficult times in 2010 and 29 with flooding uh, our thing actually worked exactly as we had planned it so it was nice to see that was the case and then the last two shots this shows an area right at the very bottom not far from where the crash is where the children can come and see uh, look at the ducks and the swans and the water with the fish in it but also it's an area under that is the control valves that contain how you release the water and the speed with which you release the water so everything has two or three functions and then finally it is a carefully constructed design that works on a functional ecological and cost effective way but the key difference is that the thought that went in at the design stage and set structures and methodologies that then have worked from a period from 2002 to now so that's it in a gallop uh, about Backwestern.